A very good morning friends. I welcome you all to the weekly Indian Express newspaper analysis brought to you by the Shankar AIS Academy. Today I have chosen six different articles which were published in the last week of October in Indian Express newspaper. Friends, I have chosen these articles based on their current relevance to our UPSC examination. Friends, you can complement this analysis with the daily Hindu news analysis of the Shankar AIS Academy to get a holistic picture of the current affairs of the week. Displayed here are the news articles which we are going to discuss now. So, without much delay, let us get us into discussion. Before entering discussion, I have an important announcement to make. See, we know that current affairs are playing an important role in our civil service preparation. It will be a constant companion in all the three stages of the exams, that is prelims, mains and interview. So, to cover them holistically, Shankar AIS Academy has started Chakra Initiative. These initiatives features 50 plus current affairs session, 9 total tests and 5 rapid revision sessions. With this features, this initiative covers the current affairs from both preliminary and mains perspective. See that the first session of the initiative starts from 1st November 2023. For the various other details about the program, I am attaching a link below. You can click on the link and go through the program. With this, you can enrich your preparation. Look at this article. Recently, Russia passed a law to withdraw from the ratification of Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty or CTBT. See, this was done in the backdrop of a strained relationship between Russia and Western powers. This strain was further increased due to the recent Russia-Ukraine war. See, this is the crux of the article. In our discussion, let us see about the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty or CTBT. First of all, what is CTBT? See, CTBT is a multilateral treaty that bans all nuclear explosions across the world. These nuclear explosions could be for military or peaceful purposes. But CTBT bans all these nuclear explosions. Know that it was adopted by United Nations General Assembly UNGA in the year 1996. Subsequently, this treaty was signed by 187 nations and ratified by 178 nations across the world. Now let us see the objectives of this treaty. Firstly, it aims to stop qualitative and quantitative nuclear arms across the world. Secondly, it aims to prevent further health and environmental damages which are caused by nuclear test explosions. Thirdly, it curbs both the development of new nuclear weapons and the improvement of the existing nuclear weapons. Now, let us see whether this treaty was implemented across the world. Know that this treaty was not implemented till now because for the treaty to get into force, it must be signed and ratified by 44 specific countries of the world. You can ask why these specific countries? Why? Because these are the holders of the nuclear technologies of the world. But 8 of these 44 countries have not yet ratified the agreement. These 8 countries are China, Egypt, India, Iran, Israel, North Korea, Pakistan and the United States of America. Therefore, CTBT has not entered into force and it lacks legal authority in the world. Now, let us see the institutional arrangements of the treaty. See, CTBT provides for a extensive verification measures to ensure the compliance of the treaty. It includes International Monitoring System IMS, to detect any nuclear explosions across the world. Secondly, it has a global infrastructure of the satellite communications from IMS station to IDC that is International Data Center. The purpose of the IDC is to process and distribute the data to the parties of the treaty. Thirdly, this treaty has on-site inspection mechanism to determine whether any country has cheated on its commitment. And moreover, to implement the verification arrangements, the treaty establishes Comprehensive Test Ban Organization or CTBTO. Know that it is an organization established by the parties to the treaty on 1996. Its headquarters is located in Vienna. The objective of the organization is firstly to achieve the purpose of the treaty, secondly to implement the provisions of the treaty, thirdly it 
provides a forum for consultation and cooperation among the member states. Now, let us see what is the significance of this treaty. Since its introduction, the testing of the nuclear weapon has been discouraged around the world. Know that even non-ratifying countries like India, Israel, Pakistan has been observing the moratoriums of the treaty. Now, finally, let us see the stand of India with respect to the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. Know that India has refused to sign CTBT. The stand of India is driven by its national security interests. We all know that India views nuclear weapon as an effective deterrent against its nuclear neighbors. This is all about the discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty the objectives of the treaty, whether this treaty got implemented across the world and we also saw about the institutional arrangements of the treaty and we also saw about the significance and the stand of India with respect to CTBT. Now, with all these learned points, let us take up the next article. Look at this news article, which was published in Indian Express. It talks about the concerns of the election commission on conducting simultaneous elections in the country. Know that in a reply to the law commission, this idea of one nation, one election, election commission asks for a definite lead time of up to one year for implementing the idea of conducting one nation, one election. See, this is the crux of the article. In our discussion, let us see about the idea of simultaneous election or one nation, one election, its advantages and the challenges associated with it. First of all, what is simultaneous elections? See, simultaneous elections is an idea of holding elections to Lok Sabha, state legislative assemblies, local self bodies at the very same time, that is once in five year time period. See, the central aim of the idea is to minimize the frequency of elections in the country and thereby reducing the cost associated with it. Know that the practice of simultaneous election is not a new phenomenon in the country. In fact, it was very common until 1967 and then it was disrupted due to various factors like dismissals of the governments, defections within the party, etc. See, this idea has come again to the limelight with the Prime Minister advocating for it. And recently, a high-level committee headed by former President Ramnath Govind has been appointed to inquire about this idea. Now, let us see the advantages of conducting simultaneous elections. The first advantage is, it leads to the reduction in the massive expenditure of conducting elections. As we all know, that elections in India is a very costly exercise that needs a huge amount of money. As per the PRS data, the formal expenditure by the Election Commission of India for conducting 2019 Lok Sabha elections was about 10,000 crores. The cost of Election Commission will be substantially lowered with the implementation of One Nation, One Election. Moreover, the same electoral role can be used for all three types of elections and this will lead to saving a substantial time and resources for the state. Let us see the second advantage. This will ensure effective governance in the country. Currently, elections are a recurrent phenomenon in this country. It means elections are happening for every three months. Know that under the political pressure to win the elections, the focus of every national leader that is from the Prime Minister to a local Panjayat member will be solely focused on winning the elections. So, it often leads to the neglect of governance in the country. This will be solved by idea of simultaneous elections. Secondly, election will result in the frequent imposition of Model Code of Conduct MCC. This puts hold on the entire development program and activities of both the union and state governments in the pole bound states. This problem will also be addressed by one nation, one election. The third important advantage is continuity in the policy making. As we all know, MCC will come into effect as soon as the election commission announces the date for elections. During this period, no policy decision can be made by the governments. Thus, it results in the delay in key policy initiatives at both state and central levels. Secondly, due to the pressure of the elections, Parties often tend to drop the long-term capital gains plans and they adopt various populist measures like freebies, subsidies for merely winning the elections. 
this problems will be effectively addressed by the simultaneous selections let us see the fourth advantage the advantage is prolonged deployment of the security personnel will be reduced by simultaneous selections as per the prs data know that about 2 to 5 assemblies will go to polls in every 6 months period this lead to a lock in of central armed police force and more state police force for prolonged periods and thus diversifying them from their official duties simultaneous selection will lead to the effective utilization of human resource of this country let us see the fifth advantage it is reduced political polarization frequent election can increase the political polarization and identity based politics in the country this may lead to hate crimes across the societies simultaneous selection will give no election pressure for at least 5 years to the political parties this will encourage the political parties to focus on broad national and state level issues rather than doing divisive local politics the sixth advantage is enhanced voter participation see simultaneous selections will encourage the higher voter participation as citizens have to cast their vote for every 5 years moreover it will be helpful for the migrant workers who works at various parts of country to cast their votes and participate in the electoral democracy of the country see this is all about the benefits of one nation one election now let us see the challenges which are associated with one nation one elections see for the first challenge is the constitutional challenge simultaneous elections require an amendment in various articles of the constitutions like article 83 85 172 174 and 356 thus it will need a constitutional amendment with 50% ratification of the states this is going to be a huge challenge for the government the second challenge is achieving a synchronization with the various state assemblies know that the terms of various state assemblies vary with the terms of the lok sabha so to conduct simultaneous elections the center will have to make an agreement with the state to either curtail the term or to increase the term we know that the curtailment and the extension of assembly duration is not an easy task see let us see with the data from prs to understand it better as per the recent report we know that for 17 states the terms will be reduced by year and a half if we implement simultaneous elections the terms of assemblies like karnataka meghalaya nagaland tripura will be re- reduced by three and a half years or more so making the states to agree to this idea is not an easy task let us see the third challenge the third challenge is with a logistical challenge according to the recent report by the election commission if elections are held simultaneously in 2024 it needs an additional 11.49 lakh control units 16 lakh ballot units and 13 lakh vv pats to conduct the elections see this will be a major logistical challenge for the election commission moreover deploying central force across the country is also a logistical challenge for conducting this elections the fourth major challenge is this idea will have a negative impact on the voting behavior and pattern of the country assume that when an election is held at the national level the national level issues will overshadow the regional aspirations and concerns of the people the fifth challenge is the one nation one election will reduce the accountability of the lawmakers for example assume that if there is a policy which is negatively impacting the people so due to this policy the ruling party at the central level is losing in a state election then due to this electoral defeat the central party is forced to change the policy which is impacting the people but with the implementation of the simultaneous election the electoral the parties need not worry about the concerns of the people for at least 5 years the next big challenge is the risk of one party system see the synchronization of the elections might lead to the dominant one party system it means the party winning at the national level may also sweep at the state level also and moreover this will impact the small and state parties to the most and this will curtail the political diversity which is necessary for a healthy democracy in the country see these are all about the concerns or challenges associated with the one nation one election see this is all about the discussion in this discussion we saw about the idea of simultaneous election 
the benefits of conducting it and the challenges which are associated with this idea so please revise the points which we have discussed now and it will be very useful for your mains examinations with this learned points let us move on to the next article look at this news article the central government has recently launched dark patterns buster hackathon 2023 see the aim of this hackathon is to design an app or a web based solutions to detect the dark patterns in the dark patterns online see these dark patterns are very common among the e-commerce websites of the internet so this is the crux of the article now let us see about dark patterns from the exam perspective see first of all what are dark patterns see this the term was coined by harry brignell a user experience designer in 2010 he described dark patterns as the ways by which the software companies can subtly trick the users to do things which they didn't mean to do so it also means to discourage the behaviors which are not advantageous for the companies know that the dark patterns are termed as unfair trade practices and the violation of the customer rights under consumer protection act 2019 now let us see the various type of dark patterns according to the consumer affairs ministry first of all we are going to discuss about urgency see this tactics create a sense of urgency or a scarcity to pressurize the consumers into purchase the product let me give you an example i hope many of you have ordered things on amazon sometimes when you are scrolling through the product you might have noticed below the product that only one product is left at that time what will you do will probably order that product right but the pop up which has appeared as only one left with urgency tactic by the companies let us see the second type the second type is basket sneaking see it is a mall practice of adding additional products or services to our shopping cart without the consent of the user let us see the third tactics it is called confirm sharing this tactic uses guilt or shame to influence the user's decision making this guilt can range from mild guilt trips to severe emotional abuse of the user let me give you an example sometimes websites will insult the user for not opting into the service you could have seen that commercial offers that uses the statements like no i prefer you to pay i prefer to pay more these are the kinds of confirm sharing tactics let us see the fourth things the fourth thing is forced action this involves forcing the consumers into taking an action they may not want to take for example such as signing up for the services in order to access the content the fifth one is nagging tactic what does it means it means persistent repetitive annoyingly constant criticism complaints or requests for actions let me give you an example you would have seen in youtube it always nags us to sign up for youtube premiums with obscuring pop ups obscuring the final seconds of video with thumbnails of next video etc it nagging us to opt for youtube premium by doing such tactics let us see the sixth tactic it is called subscription tap this tactic makes it easy for the consumer to sign up for a service but it will make them difficult to cancel it often by hiding the cancellation option or requiring multiple steps to cancel it for example Amazon was encoded in the European Union for its confusing multi-step cancellation process of the Amazon Prime subscription. Let us see the seventh one. It is called bait and switch. You would have experienced this issue where we saw an advertisement for a product in online and we are satisfied with that and we are lured by that and we will order that. But when it got delivered, we will be shocked as it will be an entirely different product or a product of similar type but with lesser quality. This is all about bait and switch. Now let us see about drip pricing. See, this tactic involves hiding additional costs from the consumers until finally they are committed to making a purchase. Let us see the final one. It is called disguised ads. Disguised ads are nothing but advertisements that are designed to look like other type of content like news article, user generated content, etc. See, these are the various type of dark patterns which we are observing in our internet now let us see about the actions which are taken by the government the central government urged e-commerce companies not to use dark patterns on their platforms know that the government also set up a 17 member committee 
to prepare guidelines to protect the consumers from dark patterns moreover the government has also released national consumer helpline 1915 to complain about the grievances of dark patterns it additionally told that the compilations of such complaints will be used by central protection authority to initiate actions under consumer protection act 2019 See this is all about the dark patterns which we are facing in our internet with this learned points let us take up the next news article look at this news article recently the delhi police arrested a woman who was accused of human trafficking this may look like an ordinary crime news but the shocking fact is in fact she was arrested now but the case against her was first registered 30 years ago see this incident reveals us the flaws in the current model of combating human trafficking and the need for a restructured mechanism to deal with the cases of trafficking this is the crux of the article now let us see in our discussion about the human trafficking before entering our analysis let's look at the syllabus see this topic will come under general studies 3 under the topic of challenges to internal security through communication network role of media and social networking sites in internal security challenges and it may also ask in the topic of security challenges and their management in border areas linkages of organized crimes with terrorism see these are all the areas in our syllabus where we can fit this analysis okay let us get into discussion first of all what is human trafficking see according to the united nations office on drugs and crime unodc human trafficking means recruitment transportation harboring transfer or receipt of a person for exploitation by using certain means these means are the use of threat force abduction fraud deception etc no the purpose of human trafficking is for exploitation that includes physical or sexual exploitation slavery or forced removal of organs guys see i am giving you a standard definition from the official website like unodc likewise you can also create a template of definition for various topics like terrorism cyber threat etc for your mains examination this will save your time in the examinations or you can give an alternative definition of your own definition like human trafficking is a trade of human beings by various methods like abduction fraud deception etc this is mainly done for making money or doing any drug peddling activities see this is one of the important organized crime which is rising in recent times likewise also you can also give a own introduction for the topic see this is all about the introduction of human trafficking now let us see some data regarding the human trafficking according to the national crimes record bureau ncrb a total of 2189 cases of human trafficking were registered in 2021 this was 27.7% rise when compared to the 1714 cases which were filed in 2020 and moreover a total of 6500 victims were reported to be trafficked which includes 2800 children and 3600 adults apart from this 6000 victims were being rescued from the clutches of the traffickers okay this is all about the recent data regarding the human trafficking see quoting the recent data will enrich your answer in mains examination now let us move on to various types of human trafficking see the various types are based on the purpose of the trafficking which includes forced labor prostitution sexual exploitation domestic servitude forced marriage child pornography etc now let us see the causes of human trafficking see the first and foremost cause is poverty and lack of income see empty stomach forces people to look for menial job in urban areas such as unskilled jobs domestic workers etc these people will in turn fall under the clutches of the traffickers and they were exported to cities or other countries for domestic servitude or bonded labor etc see the second reason is caste based discrimination and illiteracy see this factor forces people to sign contracts for mere advances and they are be pushing them to forced or bonded labors the third cause is increasing sex trade and domestic labor market see patriarchy and dominant thoughts often see women as a lesser being 
or as a commodity to make profit this makes them prone to the market of sex trade or domestic labor know that the minor girls in the age group of 15 to 18 years are more vulnerable to trafficking due to the said reasons the fourth important trend is there is a rise in cyber trafficking see a recent report by UNODC reveals a shocking trend we can see an increasing usage of internet among the children for education entertainment purposes but this was used by the traffickers as a trap to entrap the victims by advertising false jobs on a social media the fifth important cause is various negative externalities like covid-19 pandemic armed conflict in arab or african countries and climate change across the world further increases the vulnerability of children and women to human trafficking let us see the final cause of the problem the final cause is the lack of enforcement of law see look at the data of the anti human trafficking unit ahtu in 2010 it was planned that 330 ahtu would be set up across the country in 2020 recent rte reports from 2020 reveals that only 225 ahtu had been set up moreover a study conducted by sanyoj a civil society organization states that as of 2020 only half of the ahtu that were previously notified were functioning that is out of 225 ahtu which were notified only half of them are in the functioning state it also reveals that most of the institutions were constituted only by the police officials or near retirees this apathy of the police department can be visible with the extremely low conviction rates in the human trafficking crime see in 2019 there were 140 acquittals and only 38 convictions in the cases of human trafficking these were the various causes of this problem now let us move on to the impacts of human trafficking see the first and foremost impact is the economic exploitation persons who are trafficked often tend to work in inhuman conditions low and abysmal wages we should also know that forced labor like beggar system are directly related to human trafficking let us see the second impact of this problem the second is violation of human rights human trafficking violates the victims human rights the victims were deprived of their freedom dignity and security the third impact is physical or psychological trauma of the victims see the victims will face physical psychological abuse violence trauma it will have an impact of injuries sexually transmitted diseases malnutrition psychological impacts like anxiety depression ptsd post traumatic stress disorder etc let us see the fourth impact see human trafficking drug trafficking are closely related to terror financing to put it simply these are all the three sides of the same internal security problem triangle thus human trafficking poses a serious threat to the security of the country the fifth impact is the child trafficking the trafficking of children leads to the robbing of childhood from the children it forces them to do child labor this leads to serious damage to the physical and mental health of the children now we have completed the impacts of human trafficking now let us see the steps needed to be taken to prevent human trafficking first of all let us see the legislative measures needed to combat this menace see currently india does not have a composite anti trafficking law to deal with the issue in a comprehensive manner that is to address from the prevention protection stages to rehabilitation compensation of victims stages in fact we are having separate laws like immoral trafficking to stop the immoral trafficking and sex work we are having bonded labor system abolition act 1976 which prohibits the system of bonded labor we are having transplantation of human organs and tissues act 1994 which effectively banned the commercial dealing in human organs see from the said examples we can assume that we are having separate laws for each and every crime but the need of the hour is india needs a comprehensive law to deal with all of them because all these problems are interconnected to each other in this context the trafficking in persons prevention care and rehabilitation bill 2021 needs to be passed immediately to address the issue of human trafficking the second step is increasing the coordination among ahtu is the need of the hour 
a joint operations by state and central government should be encouraged to overcome the issue of human trafficking the third step is by leveraging the technologies by leveraging the technologies we shall combat the human trafficking and we shall also increase the operational efficiency of the forces let us take an example india is having crime multi agency center or crimac actually it is a national level communication platform which was launched in march 2020 this it platform will help to share information among the center states police forces this information can also be used against the human trafficking across the country on a real time basis and it will increase the interstate coordination fourth important steps need to be taken is international collaboration see india should collaborate with the neighborhood and other countries in combating human trafficking why because most of the trafficking is routed through the neighborhood countries only see india is in the middle of two of the world's biggest illicit opium growing states they are afghanistan and myanmar so there is a definite linkages between drug trafficking money laundering and human trafficking which affects the security of india so what we need to do we need to have a collaborative effort like knowledge exchange platform to share innovative approaches information about the victims and the offenders with each other see the final step is there is also a need to foster partnership with the third sector like ngo academia and private sectors to collaborate in various areas like rehabilitation of the victims increasing the awareness about the trafficking educating the children about these crimes providing psychological and emotional supports during the rehabilitation process see before concluding let us have a recap about what we saw in this discussion first we saw about the human trafficking types of human trafficking causes of trafficking and the impacts of this problem and finally we saw about the various steps taken by the government guys please revise this point often because it will be very useful for writing mains answers so with this learned points let us conclude this discussion and take up the next article look at this news article it was published in indian express on october 23 see the bond yield on a 10 year old government bonds in the united states rose to 5% it is the highest level of increase since july 2007 you can ask why an increase in the us bond yield is important to us why means it is the benchmark rate for all other asset prices across the world various economists attribute to this rise to the various factors like rising crude oil prices inflation etc see this is the crux of the article in our news discussion let us analyze about the various economic terms like bond bond yield etc first of all what is a bond generally a bond is an instrument used to borrow money from the market it can be issued by both the governments or by the companies to raise funds know that the government bonds are also called as gsex are generally backed by a sovereign guarantee of the government so they are considered to be one of the safest instruments in the market than the private sectors in this junction we should know about the basics of the market a highly secured investment will give low yield and vice versa so by going by that logic gsex will have the lowest returns on investments this return is technically called yield so let us see what is bond yield generally bond yield is the return an investor realizes on a bond to put it simply bond yield is the return on the capital which was invested by the investor but this return on the bond is not fixed it changes with the various parameters like the price of the bond interest rates etc now let us see some of the basic economic terms like bond price face value coupon payment to understand the correlation between them in a better manner first of all let us see what is bond price see bond price is the price at which the bond is sold to the investors second face value it is an amount a bond holder will receive when there is the maturity of the bond it is also called as par value know that this face value will always remain fixed but the price of a bond can fluctuate in the market based on the prevailing market interest rates let us see the third component it is coupon payments coupon payments are nothing but annual interest rate paid on a bond it is generally expressed as a percentage of the face value 
Let's see the coupon rate is paid from the issue date until the maturity of the bond. These are all various basics of the bond market. Know that every bond has a face value and a coupon payment. Moreover, it will also have a price of a bond which may or may not be equal to the face value of the bond. This is the basics of various terms used in the bond market. Now, let us apply them in an example to understand the concept in a good manner. Suppose the face value of a 10 year government security is 100 rupees the coupon payment is 5 rupees buyer of the bond will give the government rupees 100 that is the face value in return the government will pay them rupees 5 as the coupon payment every year for the next 10 years why because the bond was purchased for 10 years the government will pay back rupees 100 at the end of the 10 years this is how a bond market will work In the example which we discuss now the bond yield is or effective interest rate is 5% guys this is the basics of bond yield now let us see how an yield falls generally bond price and yield are inversely related as the price of the bond goes up it yields goes down and when yield goes up the price will go down it may look some chaotic but let us understand it with a good example imagine a situation in which there is only one gsec in the market and there are two buyers in the market in such a scenario the selling price of the bond may go from rupees 100 to 105 or 110 why this is so this is because of the competitive bidding by the two buyers now you have to be remindful of a fact that even if the bond is sold at rupees 110 the coupon payment of the bond will not change why so because it is expressed as a percentage of the face value which we have discussed already thus as the price of the bond increases from rupees 100 to 110 the yield will falls to 4.5 percentage this is all about the fall in the bond yield see the reverse will happen when there is a fall in the bond price of the market it means it will increase the bond yield this is all about the basics of the bond market bond yield etc This is all about the discussion. Let us take up the next news article. Look at this news article which was given in the explained column of the Indian Express. See, last week several state governments have ordered the respective schools to get a parental consent for its new scheme. The scheme is for the creation of a new student identity card for the whole of the country. This process is officially known as automated permanent academic account registry or apaar this is the crux of the article so in our discussion let us see about apaar or apaar first of all what is apaar apaar stands for automated permanent academic account registry see it is a 12 digit digital identification system for the school students in india now the purpose of the apaar is to give each student starting from pre primary to higher education a unique identification number know that it is a part of one nation one student id initiative of the union government this idea had its genesis from the new national education policy of 2020 now let us see what is the purpose of apar see the first purpose is it aims to give each students a lifelong apar id see this id will serve as a guide to the students schools or governments to track the academic progress of the students from pre primary to higher education level as we all know this was the objective of national education policy 2020 to comprehensively cover the education timeline from pre primary to higher education level secondly apar will digitally store the academic qualification credit scores certificates of the students by doing so this will ensure a hassle free access for the students to their respective documents moreover apar will also connect students to the digi locker system of the government now let us see what is the process of apar in the process firstly students will have to give their basic informations like name age date of birth gender and photograph to the schools then the collected information will be verified against the aadhar number of the student here an important point to be remembered is 
the aadhar will be only used in the verification purposes and will not be shared or stored anywhere else know that the enrollment process will be done by the schools this will be done with the consent of the parents moreover we should know that parents can withdraw their consent at any given point of time moreover epars data will be shared only with the concerned government agencies and the data will be stored in a centrally functioning district information education portal now let us see what are the challenges with epar id the first challenge is with the data security concerns see there is a general concern about the leakages of data security this was increased due to the various leakages in the aadhar data in recent times so we should take strict actions to ensure the privacy of the children secondly this will be an extra work for the schools see school teachers are already vested with various works like election duty verifying aadhar details for the children etc so apart registration will put additional burden on the schools this may reduce the learning outcome of the children that's all about the discussion regarding the apar here in this analysis we saw about what is apar the roots of the apar what is the purpose of it and the concerns regarding it so with this let us close this discussion with this article we have come to the end of our discussion i hope with this video you can comprehensively cover all the important topics of the week we expect your continued support for this program you can support us by like share your friends and subscribe to shankar ias academy for more updates regarding your civil service preparations thank you for watching thank you